220 AD, the Great Wall. 1420, the Forbidden City. 1997, Three Gorges Dam. 2002, China does it again. Chinese engineers and workers tackle one of the biggest construction projects on Earth. In the middle of the ocean. The biggest possible piece of infrastructure that they could possibly build. Welcome to Yangshan, on track to become the biggest deep water port ever built. A 20 kilometer key with 50 berths, over 30 kilometers out to sea. Linked to China by the world's second longest ocean bridge. Where massive cranes, a cutting edge control system, and some very, very focused personnel are already shattering records for loading and unloading gigantic container ships. Battling for supremacy in the world's biggest import-export trade and Yang Shen's not even close to being finished. Spring 2007, the Gudrun Maersk, one of the largest container ships on Earth, sails 32 kilometers off the Chinese coast. I started turning so early, but due to the current, then I could see it afterwards, so it was a good idea. Her deck stacked high with 3,000 shipping containers, a multi-million dollar cargo. And 32 kilometers out at sea, the crew of the Gudrun Maersk is just about to put it all overboard. At one of the biggest cargo facilities on Earth. The Yangshan Deepwater Container Port. It'll be years before this mega port is finished, but Yangshan's docks are already over three kilometers long. On those docks, some of the world's biggest and brawniest cranes. High-tech trucks. One of the most advanced control systems at any container port. And some of the best container port operators in the business are getting ready for the Gudrun Maersk. They'll have a good day's work ahead of them and they'll have less than a day to do it. From the moment this giant ship docks, they'll have just 20 hours to unload her 3,000 shipping containers and load her up with 2,000 more. Then they'll have to move the 3,000 unloaded containers to the mainland, over 32 kilometers of open sea. And there's no room for error. Every ship, every day, Yangshan's battling powerful rivals for supremacy in a billion dollar business. Shanghai. China's biggest city and the world's busiest cargo port. In the 21st century, China's export-import trades exploding by nearly 30% per year. And Shanghai's in the right place at the right time. Located about halfway down the Chinese coast, right at the point where the Yangtze, the world's third largest river, empties into the sea. Billions of dollars of goods made in China 
travel down the Yangtze to be shipped abroad. In 2001, that was 300 million tons of cargo. By 2005, it was nearly 800 million. Shanghai should be sitting pretty. But it's got problems. Big problems. Problems these two guys deal with every day. Wu Jiang Wen and Jiang Wei are Shanghai harbor pilots. Their job, climb on board cargo ships arriving from the open sea and steer them to a safe berth at Shanghai's docks. And that's even harder than you think. The color of the sea reveals why. Muddy brown, the color of a river. Every year, millions of tons of silt wash down the Yangtze River and into the sea. Where the Yangtze meets the ocean, all that silt piles up in sandbars, exactly where hundreds of ships are sailing into Shanghai. At low tide, the silted up entrance to the world's busiest cargo port is only seven meters deep. And in today's world, any ship that can clear seven meters is a mere rowboat. The biggest ships that come into Shanghai need 12 meters water depth. So they are very dependent on high tide. So when we go in or out of port, we have to pay very careful attention to the height of the tide. Today's vessel needs only eight meters depth. It cleared the sandbars at high tide. But that doesn't mean Wu Zhang Wen and Zhang Wei are having a nice day. They look relaxed, but they know their problems are just beginning. Because Shanghai's aquatic arteries are seriously clogged with more than just silt. Their ships now entering the Huangpu, a smaller river that runs through Shanghai. And they're about to steer it through one of the worst maritime traffic jams on Earth. Normally, we'll have more than 100 ships coming into the river mouth and another 100 ships going out over 24 hours. And that's just the big ships over 5,000 tons. I'm not even counting the smaller ones. It is not a simple matter of one ship following another. There are ports all along the river. Ships have to cut across traffic, so there is a lot of risk. Shipping expert Matthew Flynn compares sailing up the Huangpu to commuting to work in the middle of the Indianapolis 500. It's probably one of the most exciting and memorable uh, journeys that any ship captain can make. That doesn't mean that he's looking forward to it 